So the interesting thing is that statins have two effects. So in the short term, I believe statins actually reduce the risk of cardiac events. And that was for my first lecture where we talked about how they actually inhibit the release of matrix metalloproteinases and they actually have anti-clotting mechanisms. So in the shorter term, if you take a statin on day one, it will actually reduce the risk of cardiac events irrespective of the LDL level. So we know it's got nothing to do with LDL lowering at all. And it doesn't take any time to come on. It happens basically as soon as you take the statin. The problem is that statins also have adverse consequences, which ultimately will, over time, continue to accumulate. And this, in my mind, is probably why long-term statin studies have never been performed. My statin studies are one or two years. I think the longest that I've ever seen was seven years, and that was quite an outlier. And my feeling for this is that the risks of taking statins are likely to accumulate and increase over time, and it would only make sense if you wanted to build a case to sell statins that you would probably do your studies short enough so that you don't actually capture that increased risk. We certainly know that factors like coronary artery calcium score, it, it's well regarded that that's a very good measure of plaque instability and cardiovascular risk. And it's also accepted that statins increase coronary artery calcium. And it's funny, you watch people tie themselves in knots trying to explain this. We know statins are good, we know calcium's bad, Statins increase calcium, hang on, my head's going to explode. So they've come up with this term, paradoxical calcium. Now, why is it paradoxical? Well, it's paradoxical because we know it's bad, but it must be good because it comes from statins. It's just complete and utter lunacy to even think that. So in summary, the statins have an immediate benefit in reducing thrombotic risk and plaque stabilizing by inhibiting the release of the matrix metalloproteinases. But over time, the longer you take them, I believe the adverse effects are gonna become magnified and accumulate. I wanted to ask, if people already have diabetes, do statins make the control and the um, issues with diabetes worse? Yes. I don't want to present biased information here, so for your information, I suggest you go to crestor.com. <laughs> Seriously. And in the top right of the screen, click on the prescribing information chart, and then uh, do a search through that, and you'll see that statins, it, because by law they have to put this information on their website, and you'll see that statins have been associated with increases in blood glucose, and they have vague wording, you know, that may exceed the threshold for diagnosis of diabetes. Basically, uh, crystal.com has information on their website confirming that not only do statins worsen diabetic control, but it actually causes diabetes in the first place. Interestingly, when we look at the data on uh, people's persistence with vegan style diets, that most people don't last more than four or five years. And I wonder whether some of that has to do with the liver only sustaining about four or five years B12 supply. Now, given that B12 is really the only nutrient that will absolutely kill you outright if you don't have it for long enough, it certainly makes sense from an evolutionary perspective that the liver actually has a particularly long store of B12 in it. Because obviously throughout human history, we're gonna have had periods of famine and you know, sometimes there are, you know, humans will have had to resort to plant foods to survive. Not, survive, not thrive, but just to survive, you know, and they'll be B12 deficient. So it makes sense that there is a, a longish store of that particular nutrient that will keep us alive, but more the particular genetics that would lead somebody to being more resilient to a B12 deficiency or iron deficiency, I don't know of. So first of all, it's an established principle that studies that have terminated early are well known to uh, bias results and lead to false outcomes. And there's been some very prominent studies on statins that have indeed finished early. So there was, there was one study which was the only study on primary prevention. It was supposedly a primary prevention study. Um, in actual fact, it wasn't, it included people um, who had secondary prevention features, sorry, yeah, secondary prevention features, and so it basically wasn't what it was saying. It 
was. And it also, at the start of the study, the investigators uh, laid down explicit criteria at which the study could be terminated early. And, and this is the way research is normally done, is to keep everything above board and transparent. So when the researchers got the first hint of results that might have been positive, they didn't want to risk those results um, turning away, so they ceased the study early in direct contradiction to their own criteria. And that's probably what you're referring to. <laughs>